South Africa has transformed in the past 20 years, growing and developing rapidly. With new schools, roads, houses and stadiums being built all over the country, whole communities have been lifted out of poverty. Unfortunately, there are still a large number of school children who go to school hungry, which limits their learning potential as they cannot concentrate. NGOs like Seed and Food and Trees for Africa have developed permaculture school programs that combine sustainable design gardening, education and greening to feed learners' bodies and nourish their minds. This brings education alive by using the natural environment and building green leaders for our future. Permaculture gardens are a powerful metaphor for social change as learners are actively involved in transforming barren school ground into a productive and abundant space. The more green the school is, the happier the children are, the happier the educators are. It makes a difference to them to how they feel and how they think about themselves. From the day when they introduced this permaculture to our school, it has made such a big improvement in our teaching. A project like this is teaching our children to use the resources that they get for free, that is uh, nature. They are able to get uh, food, they are able to, to learn, to clean the environment, to take care of themselves. It has made great changes, for all our children's holding in the nature, the tuinen, mooi maak, verfraaien. This is a project that net your school trots can make. We're actually encouraging children to also take what they learn and go and practice at home. So it has been like involving everybody. That's going to be a, give a positive uh, impact on the community to actually grow their own crops. I think it's the, it's the way forward to a better future. Permaculture is a design system for long term sustainability, and our work always begins with a design. The design process analyzes all the factors that influence an area and provides a map for creating an effective and resilient system that allows all the different parts to work together as a holistic whole. The process we go through is a very collaborative process with all the stakeholders involved. The community members and the staff from the school know more about the particular area, so we need each other in that collaboration. The first step in the design process is really to, to get a baseline map to scale down on paper. A slightly more measured way, which involves a lesson with children, is to actually measure the space, draw out the buildings to scale, and the space one wishes to design for a garden. Permaculture design is common sense and works on the development of zones where elements are placed according to how many times you need to use and visit them. The school is designed to be energy efficient. Areas that need visiting every day for harvesting and maintenance, such as vegetable gardens, the nursery and recycling, are placed near to the outdoor classroom to facilitate easy access. The gardens are thus divided into zones of intensive activity, radiating outwards from the center of activity. What we end up with is a map of the area, and on top of that we have a, a map of the sectors, and on top of that we have the zones. So we combine all of those things together, and that's how we decide where to put the elements in the garden. We're now in the foyer of Springdale Primary School, and they've put the design of the school garden up on the wall, so everybody that comes into the school can see the garden design on paper, then when they go out through that door, they will see the garden on the ground. They'll see the, the manifestation of the design. Over the last two years, some of the design has changed because of environmental factors. For instance, um, w where the wind has been particularly strong under the alien blue gum trees, where nothing really grows, we decided to bring in soil and build a mountain of tires and plant indigenous plants in that new soil to create a windbreak. We've added a lot 
to the original design in that we've managed to get over a hundred trees planted around the school garden as well. The garden now extends much further than this design, or the original design. But all the, the elements that we put into every garden in the first year are included. Um, the basics being the outdoor classroom, the infrastructure elements, the, um, the rain tank, and wind breaks, vegetable beds, fruit trees, um, compost, worm farms, grey water, banana systems. So all of these things have to be considered as well as the social and the aesthetic aspects. So there's a lot that goes into a design. Where, where we are concerned, education is a big part of what we are doing in the garden. So building an outdoor classroom is usually very central in the garden and it's the heart of our school garden. The outdoor classroom is integral to creating an effective learning space and it's fundamental in the design of the gardens around it. The children and the teachers must both feel happy and comfortable to work and learn in this space. At the inception of these gardens, there was a very, very stark place, very little in the way of shade or shelter, and bringing the children out into these gardens needed to be a friendly and welcoming environment. The original idea of the classroom was conceived by seed, and to have a simple, very economical to build structure that could be put up at different schools quite quickly and the original design was to have it on like a sort of like a half hexagon so the children could sit around more in a circle type environment which is a nicer kind of space and a conventional rose within a classroom. The classrooms themselves are designed to provide as much protection and shade to the children as possible so there's uh, incorporated in design is creepers and plants that will grow up around the sides in time to provide protection and they're very cleverly orientated so that the sun and the shade for different times of the year provides the maximum amount of protection. Each outdoor classroom is designed and built according to the specific requirements of each school. This means they vary from benches under large trees to full timber framed roof structures. Teachers and students love the opportunity to learn practically outdoors, breaking the monotony of traditional learning. Children always want to get lessons out from that shelter and it makes them to, to move away from the, you know, the, the, the classroom environment that sometimes gives them no freedom of movement and it, it really stimulates them. Children really enjoying coming outside than sitting in the classroom. So now it's better if you, if you, you, you learn something and you see it other, other than just to, to use it books only. I think that's, that's, that's the beauty about the outdoor classroom because it's, it, it gives um, the kids another opportunity to learn in a different setup. It, it stimulates the mind of the child in that the child is not so familiar with the surroundings of the outdoor class. So taking the kids out to, to learn and practically in the garden and bringing them out to the outdoor class just is like putting the cherry on top. It's fantastic. You know, integrating the elements of permaculture into the school curriculum are very easy. Once people start to understand what exactly permaculture is, and it's really about creating a permanent cultural system, and we focus on the agriculture part of that system, but it links to, it links to biology, it links to physics, it links to geography, it links to economics, it links to most every subject. There is a way to find out how can we create more permanent systems, because with the state of the environment as it is now, sustainability is becoming the most important aspect that we can try to integrate into every subject that we're involved with. Remember our soil is very, very important in our lives. Before we talk about how to make a compost, let us talk a little bit about the soil. Soil is the base from which all life comes and reconnecting with the earth gives both the students and the teacher a better understanding of sustainable living. Due to its size and varied ecosystems, South Africa has many soil types, ranging from rich and fertile to poor and sandy. Permaculture teaches schools to develop systems to improve their soil. The better the soil quality, the healthier and more abundant the harvest.
Lifeless barren soil needs organic matter to transform it into a healthy growing medium. One technique for building soil health is to add compost. Students learn to make compost at school, allowing the teachers to practically demonstrate concepts from both biology and geography lessons. Making the compost at the school ensures a sustainable supply of clean organic nutrients for the food gardens and recycles waste from the kitchen and the school grounds. Pupils from Mbuyisa Makubu Primary build up their existing compost heap by following the steps laid out by their school's permaculture facilitator. They start by collecting green matter, leaves, weeds and grass from around the school. They lay this on top of the compost heap, then add a layer of horse manure, collected from a crawl just down the road. This is covered with a dry layer of newspaper, straw and dried leaves. Food scraps and kitchen waste are layered on top of that, and then the growing pile is watered to ensure that the compost is evenly moist. This process is repeated and finally covered with mulch. Inside the moist, material-rich pile, microorganisms immediately begin their work of decomposing the material. In three months, the raw materials will be broken down into dark, rich compost ready to be used in the garden. My name is Mamkela Momoza. We are in Shumang Primary School, Orlando West. This is the worm farming, and we're treating worms, and we want to show the world how important worms are. When we talk about earthworm farming, it's very much important things uh, to have an earthworm. Why? To improve our soil. It's not difficult to save, uh, set up the earthworm farm. All the recycling uh, kitchen waste, we use it to feed our earthworm farm so that our earthworm farm can produce effectively uh, liquid manure, LM. Another fun and practical way of enhancing the soil is through earthworm farming. Each school has its own worm farm, which can be made from any container that has a drain at the bottom. Here, we see an old bath being recycled as the school's worm farm. The worms need a moist, shaded environment to live, as well as food to eat. In the worm farm, a layer of straw or newspaper covers the farm to keep away sunlight and heat. Worms are fed kitchen waste, most of which they happily and quickly consume turning food scraps into nutrient-rich, organic matter that can be used to amend the garden soil. The drain at the bottom of the worm farm allows for capture of liquid manure, a concentrated nutrient-rich liquid that is used as a fertilizer and a soil booster. We're going to use the straw as mulch. All of you say mulch. 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 Another important technique for building soil and to prevent soil erosion is the use of mulch, an organic ground cover of dry plant material such as straw, hay or wood chips that keeps direct sunlight off the soil and holds moisture in. Mulch gardens require much less watering to keep plants healthy. Additionally, mulch prevents unwanted weeds from growing and over time breaks down, enriching the soil with organic matter. But the plants and the straw and other anim uh, uh, yeah, organic matter, they, we say they are biodegradable. All of you say that? Biodegradable. Let's go. Biodegradable. Use your hands now. Biodegradable. Again. Biodegradable. Right. South Africa is a water-scarce country. Our water resources are precious and valuable. Water is life. And as a nation, we need to manage our water resources so that the natural systems that keep our water clean and abundant are restored and healthy. Our schools can be models demonstrating appropriate water use for the different rainfall areas of the country. Permaculture water principles are summarized by the five S's. Stop, sink, spread, store, and save. Stop! Sink! Spread! Stop! Save! To 
help reduce reliance on municipal water and save money, the schools install rainwater tanks to capture water runoff from the roofs. The water is stored in the tanks until it's needed in the garden. Making use of free natural resources reduces strain on aquifers, teaches conservation, and is an integral part of becoming self-sustaining. Now, I want you to look at what happened to my pour the water down here. A Dean, a permaculture facilitator in KZN, demonstrates to a class how uncontrolled rainwater will run off the land, removing the valuable topsoil and washing it into the rivers, causing soil erosion. One permaculture solution is to capture this water in swales. Swales are shallow trenches that run along the contour line, catching groundwater, slowing the water down and sinking it into the ground so plants can more readily make use of it. In the very beginning of the project, the first thing we did was we made the A-frame, which is a very simple, easy to make tool for measuring the contours of the land on the school. Um, anywhere that there's a slope, it's very important to know where the land is level. That's where we dig our swales, that's where we uh, make our garden beds and our pathways so we can harvest runoff water and we can keep the soil in the ground rather than having it erode and go downhill. Okay, so we made our A-frame. All you need are three sticks, a piece of string and a weight to hold it down. To work out where the contour lines are, the children use an A-frame, a simple appropriate technology tool that teaches the pupils about maths and geography. The A-frame lesson is both fun and interactive. The people select the land where runoff is causing erosion or where they wish to design a food garden. They place the A-frame on a starting point and make sure that the weighted string is on a calibrated level line. The A-frame is then swiveled from leg to leg across the sloped area, checking each time that the string falls on the level line and each leg point is marked with a stone until the desired length is reached. The line of stones marks the level points, which form the contour line. Now that the contour line is marked, the pupils dig a wide trench along the line, placing the dark soil on the downward facing slope, forming a berm for plants, trees or shrubs which will take up water from the soil. The ground is mulched to protect the soil from evaporation, which ensures maximum use of water, allowing plants to establish quickly and strongly. Grey water is water that has already been used once for activities such as hand washing, dish washing and cooking which can be captured and reused as water for the garden. To do this, schools set up grey water recycling beds around all outdoor taps and washing areas to make use of this otherwise wasted resource. Instead of grey water becoming a source of pollution and odour at the school, plants benefit from free, regular watering. Tina Deval, a permaculture facilitator at Mulweli Primary in Limpopo, helped to set up a large-scale grey water system at the school. Mulweli Primary School is a seed school that is in its first year and it's situated in, outside e in Elam, uh, in the Venda Limpopo area. Mulweli is, I think, a fantastic little school, got great growing spaces. We have assisted the school in developing a grey water system that has helped them to utilize their kitchen wastewater that was otherwise being thrown on the ground. The school has no electricity and they cook by fire. So a lot of the big pots, the big poiki pots that they used to cook food in, that water was getting wasted. So now we've developed a series of mulch pits which the kitchen ladies can throw their wastewater into. Well, because of that, we have made this pit. On the pit, we have planted the bananas, the lingana, the libaga, even the garlic is there, the strawberry is there, the avos, the narichis is there, the purpose is inside here. And then when they are finished washing the dishes, the dishwash water as well gets poured into an old bath and this gets transferred into a swale system that is feeding a fruit tree orchard. First, uh, to our school, uh, water was wasted because we have open uh, taps. Up until permaculture got, got involved in our school and informed us ab about how to use grey water. We're using water uh, f for our plants now ne next to the open taps where learners uh, uh, are washing their hands. We're using uh, 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 grey water. We planted banana trees. We didn't know anything about grey water. 
Now that the soil and water infrastructure has been developed, the pupils are shown where food begins, with the seed. They prepare seed trays of various crops, water them and look after them in the school nursery until they can be planted in the garden. In permaculture, the cycle does not end there. Some plants will not be harvested for food but will be left to produce seed which the school will collect to start their own seed bank for the coming year. The students are also taught to make cuttings and other forms of propagation to grow their gardens and spread their abundance out into their communities. Companion planting is the permaculture solution to avoiding pesticides and herbicides, which are often very toxic to the environment. Facilitators develop interactive teaching techniques which show the children the benefits of companion planting. Okay, today we're going to talk about this thing called companion planting. So, certain plants really like to grow together, they help each other. She demonstrates to the children how growing a monoculture, a single crop of vegetables or fruit, can result in large pest problems which ultimately destroy farmers' fields. The permaculture solution uses a diverse number of plants with beneficial properties to create a healthy, vibrant and diverse garden. Permaculture guilds are groups of plants that function together in harmony to support the productivity of the whole system. Showing the students that cooperation, not competition, works in nature also shows an important human principle. That working together, we can achieve more. The food garden is not only for educational use, but provides food for the school kitchen, giving the learners access to healthy, fresh organic vegetables, fruits and herbs. Vulnerable children with little or no food at their homes are also given food parcels to take home, showing the community the benefits of permaculture as a sustainable solution to the current food crisis. We do have two programs. One is the EduPlant program sponsored by Woolworth Epstein Engine, and the other one is the Food Gardens for Africa program. Schools across the country that grow their own permaculture gardens stand a chance of winning up to 25,000 rand by entering their food gardens into the EduPlant Schools competition. The competition is an opportunity to reward schools that promote food security, improve nutrition and self-reliance in communities. Food and Trees for Africa has been working very close with the Department of Education for our EduPlant program because the department has given us a mandate to run workshops within schools for educators. We started entering EduPlant competition in 2007. The school has benefited in the vegetables that we grow and some fruits. And yes, it has changed the health of the learners because during lunch they get some nutritious food. Looking at the challenges we face today, not only as individuals, but as communities and as a nation, it is vital that schools, greening and permaculture projects become entrenched in schools all over the country. This will help create a sustainable and abundant future for us all with a healthy, happy and environmentally conscious society. Whatever that we want to teach in class, we are able to get it right from the garden. When I talk of photosynthesis, it's easy for me to go and get a green leaf right next to uh, the classroom. Incorporate all the grades. That means all the grades take part in the whole uh, learning exercise. Really, this has been undoubtedly one of the most innovative programs I have in my education profession. Uh, come across. This project is teaching the learners that food does not come from pick and pay or checkers. They have now learned that the food comes from the soil. After planting, they will eat. At the same time, they'll be learning. So to me, this project is very exciting. Most of the children, they don't necessarily are going to be farmers. Much as they are not going to take this as a career, they don't look down on it. They take it as a skill for life. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. We it has been such a great help because we used to come to school with a hang hungry stomach and now we get food to eat. Already we're also getting people who are saying, are you selling this or can you give it to us? Some also are saying, can we join you? But I think there is that interest, you know, 
of wanting to start a garden. When we do have a school that's able to grow a lot of its own food, it becomes kind of like a beacon, it becomes a, a, a showcase to the community where they're saying, well, if it's so easy for the school to grow some of its food, surely we can grow food at home. Most of the learners in our school have food gardens at home. And it all started here in the school. I think the project can go on and go on all over the school. If you don't forget about the rural areas too, they can benefit a lot. I see that there's a great need that every school in this country should be green because of all the benefits of having the garden there, the learning areas, uh, involving the community. They can make sales from the vegetables. Uh, they can create a career for themselves. The young people will also realize that we are part and parcel of the environment. It's not something you detach yourself from. But they will understand by looking after, respecting, understanding the needs of the environment, that is what will make them sustainable as people. It helps me a lot in terms of subject in my classroom and it's pretty good to save the planet and plant more.